Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on Electronics 101 we're going to be talking about the concept of modulation. Uh, specifically today we're going to be talking about three kinds of modulation, and those three kinds are AM, FM, and PWM. Uh, these are just the basic concepts. Obviously I know that there are much more complex areas in AM and FM, uh, more specific ways to modulate information in AM and FM, but we're just going to be talking about the basics of these three kinds of modulations. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by talking about AM. AM is amplitude modulation, meaning that now when you modulate things, uh, in specifically in the cases of AM and FM, if we talk about AM here, you've got a carrier wave, and you also have the signal. So the carrier wave is the thing that's going to modulate or be modulated by the signal you want to transmit. So this is like a radio station wanting to broadcast music. An AM station will use AM modulation to encode the carrier wave and signal into one output that is broadcast by the antenna. Now in AM, the amplitude, ampli yeah, amplitude of the carrier wave modulates see that's the A and the M well it's the M, it modulates the amplitude of the signal so now I thanks to Wikipedia and their GIFs I, you're not going to have to suffer through me trying to draw what this looks like. I can just show you. So here's your signal. It's going up and down and up and down in a fixed rate. And here's the example of AM modulation. As, as you can see, as the amplitude of the signal increases, so too does the amplitude of the output wave. So I guess I should edit this. Uh, amplitude of the... output signal. Because when you have two signals and you modulate them, especially through AM, you get just one output and it really doesn't matter. One modulating the other is the same as if the carrier is modulating your input signal, it's the same as the input signal modulating the uh, carrier wave, uh, only in the case of AM. And as you can see here, if I go back to the GIF, the signal increases, the output wave increases. Now this is a specific kind of AM modulation, this is called gain modulation. Um, you can see that the, what, what do I call it, the center line for the function stays the same. You can draw a straight line through this and pick a point at the top and at the bottom on the same time axis, or on the, at the same time point, and it will be at the same level. Th this is gain, so what it's doing is it's running it through an amplifier and the signal is tweaking the gain of the final output. Now, that's a kind of complicated way to do things. Uh, there's a simpler way to do things. If I pull up our old friend Falstad's circuit simulator, I've come up with this circuit here. Uh, all this is, is it's an amplifier that's taking two signals. Um, here's our input signal. It's oscillating at about 200 hertz, and here's our modulation signal, or our carrier wave, running at 20 hertz. And what it does, the op amp sums them, and you get this as our output wave. So it's a little different than the fixed point we have here. It's not gain modulation, it's just, it's quite literally amplitude modulation. So, what you can see here is that as the because this is an amplifier and it needs a little bit of tweaking, the signal, the carrier wave here is the inverse 
here. So when this is going up, this is moving down, and when this is going down, this is moving up. So it's inverted, it's backwards, I know. So, the and you can see the 200 hertz, the higher frequency, being drawn or superimposed onto the much slower moving frequency. So if you were to take the whole sh outline, if I pause this, there we, if you were to take the outline of this, you would see that it's moving at uh, 20 hertz. If you were to take the actual wave being drawn onto it, you would see the 200 hertz. So they're being mixed with each other. This is amplitude modulation. Now amplitude modulation, as far as modulating it, is the easiest. And demodulating it is also the easiest. Because it can be done with a simple um, filter, even a passive filter. So what I have here is a high pass filter. If you want to learn more about filters, check out my video on passive filters. Little plug there. Uh, so I've got a capacitor into a resistor and the output here. And this is set to pass higher frequencies than the carrier wave. I don't know what the actual number is. I didn't calculate it. So if I plug this in, you can see the output here. And as you can see, all you see is the 200 hertz output wave. There is a if you look closely, you can see a tiny bit of deviation due to the 20 hertz wave, but if you tweak the filter, uh, make it, say, sl a uh, slightly greater attenuation, you can get rid of that 20 hertz oscillation. But it's the AM is the easiest to modulate and the easiest to demodulate. Now, if you're a radio enthusiast, you probably also know that AM is the easiest to get interference on. It's because it's easy to modulate and easy to demodulate, you can get a lot of static. So that's AM modulation. So let's talk about FM modulation. FM standing for... Where's my pen? There it is. Frequency modulation. Now in this case, FM the amplitude of the signal modulates. Now this is where it matters, which is modulating which. In this case, the signal is going to modulate, the amplitude of the signal is going to modulate the frequency of the carrier. And by modulating the frequency of the carrier, you also modulate the frequency of the output, or you, you're you modulating the output frequency, yeah, the output frequency. So AM, it didn't matter which modulated which, because as you saw, you got, it was just summing the two waves. Here, and I'll go back to my GIF, as you can see, as the signal decreases, the frequency of the output wave decreases and as it increases you can see a change it decreases the amplitude wow a little tongue tied as the signal increases the frequency of the output frequency increases and as the amplitude of the signal decreases the frequency of the output signal decreases there we go that all makes sense now this is a lot more complicated a circuit if you want to see the circuit uh, if you're interested in the circuit because it relies on something called a VCO oh, a um, voltage controlled oscillator now that's one way it can do it um, but it relies on being able to determine it ha it you have to be able to tweak the frequency of the wave and that's a tricky thing to do circuit wise unless you have something like a VCO. Uh, if you've done if you know anything about um, musical synthesis and synthesizers VCOs are the way that you generate notes and you do that by tweaking the voltage. Now Falstad, going back to him, he does have a VCO component which ha we have here, which produces a square wave output. 
and I'm going to see if I can tweak this ever so slightly so it's not as insane to look at. There we go. Okay. So here's our signal, and here's our output wave. And as you can see, as the amplitude increases, the frequency increases, and now we're decreasing. And the frequency decreases, and then we're coming back up, and the frequency will start to increase. Right, this is just a square wave. Uh, this can be true for sine waves or triangle waves or what have you. But what's important is in FM, you're tweaking the frequency of the output wave, as you can see here. So it relies on you being able to tweak the frequency. The, tweaking the amplitude is easy, tweaking the frequency is harder. And because this is harder to modulate, it's also harder to demodulate. I don't actually have a circuit on hand which is good at demodulating an FM frequency because it relies on being able to have or to know the frequency you're transmitting at, your carrier frequency, and then looking for deviations within that frequency of the audible range if you're, say, trying to transmit music because you've got to be able to look for that deviation and the deviation in the frequency is what's being modulated. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if I draw a little box diagram, so the signal amplitude there you go controls the VCO voltage the control voltage, if you will, which then goes out to the output. So what you'd have to look for is, I'm going to try, try and draw a wave here. Bear with me. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Is you have got to be able to look for the deviation in the frequency. So here's some frequency and then here's some deviation from that frequency, we'll call that deviation lambda. So you have to be able to look for that deviation, and then that's the information that's being encoded. Very sorry about this picture. Okay, so that's FM. Much more con uh, complicated than AM, but it's more complicated and you get benefits from that. Okay, last one we're going to talk about, PWM, which I will define back at the top. Ooh. PWM. Pulse with modulation. Okay, PWM is generally concerned with square waves. So this is a square wave. And it's modulating something called the duty cycle. What's the duty cycle? It's a word that's spelled correctly. Duty cycle, there we go. The duty cycle is a percentage, or most often a percentage that represents a ratio of the time on to the period of the wave. So duty cycle, duty, there we go, is time on over period or time on times frequency is that right? no, time on over period so if the wave is always on then this is a ratio of one so the duty cycle is 100% always on if it's never on you have a duty cycle of zero so the duty cycle is zero, so it's always off. If it's on 50% of the time, you've got a 50% duty cycle. If it's on 25% of the time, it's a 25% duty cycle. Okay, uh, you've, I've talked about duty cycle in a couple different tutorials, um, most notably probably the servo tutorial I did with the Arduino, because servos, have they look for a pulse width modulation of a certain time, it's about two milliseconds, I think? It's a two millisecond period, and then it looks at the duty cycle of that two millisecond period to adjust the position 
of the servo. And I've got one more circuit for that. Again, a la Falstad. And here is my control voltage, which I'm using to modulate the pulse width. And this is just done with a 555 chip, a 555 timer chip. So as you can see, as the voltage increases, the duty cycle also increases, so it stays on for a longer amount of time. And as it decreases, the duty cycle also decreases, and as you can see, the periods where it on gets slimmer and slimmer. So that's pulse width modulation. And so that is really it for the three basic kinds of modulation, AM, FM, and PWM. So yeah, uh, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.